PHM in Your Practice, the podcast where we examine population health management from a radiology perspective. I'm your host, Chris Hobson, and today I'm pleased to be speaking with Lucy Spaluto, MD, MPH, about equity and diversity in radiology. Dr. Spaluto is the Vice Chair of Health Equity at Vanderbilt University Medical Center and Director of the Radiology Department's Women and in Radiology Initiative. Dr. Spluto is a member of ACR's Commission for Women in Diversity and is also the current president of the American Association for Women in Radiology. As part of her work at Vanderbilt, Dr. Spluto endeavors to open up the field of radiology to historically underrepresented groups. Dr. Spluto, it's a pleasure to speak to you today. Thank you so much for having me. The ACR leads so many terrific initiatives focused on diversity, equity, and inclusion. I've really been looking forward to participating. We're excited to have you. I wanted to start our conversation today by asking you about your work there at Vanderbilt in particular. Uh, Much of the work you do there is related to gender equity, uh, which is part of a larger effort uh, to incorporate members of underrepresented groups uh, into radiology, including ethnic and racial minorities. Um, Can you please elaborate on both of these efforts and the part you play in them? Sure. Uh, So Vanderbilt Radiology has really been focused on initiatives that increase diversity and inclusion for several years. This really got started back in 2013 when Dr. Stephanie Spotswood, our first vice chair for diversity and inclusion, implemented a uh, diversity plan. And Dr. Spotswood is one of my favorite mentors who has since retired, but I still continue to work with regularly today. Under that diversity plan, we started our Office for Diversity and Inclusion. And this is an office that really focuses to make Vanderbilt an environment that is welcoming to trainees, faculty, and staff from all different types of backgrounds so that we can really serve a diverse patient population. In 2015, Dr. Spotswood and I went on to start our Women in Radiology Initiative, which is an initiative to foster an environment that supports and promotes the career advancement of women in radiology. And this is an initiative that I continue to oversee today. More recently, I'd say our department has really recognized the need to support initiatives that are both promoting diversity and inclusion and initiatives that are promoting health equity or the fair and just opportunity for all people to achieve maximum health. And so in order to do so, we now have both a vice chair for diversity affairs, who is Dr. Marcus Bradshaw, and a vice chair of health equity, myself. So I took on that role earlier this year, given my interest and background in health services research and promoting health equity. Interesting. Uh, In your view, why is gender, racial, and other sorts of diversity important to thriving academic and private practice uh, radiologists? I really believe that diversity promotes innovation of thought. It helps us to think of better ways of teaching. It improves the quality of care that we can provide to our increasingly diverse patient population in our country. I believe that a diverse workforce is really critical for radiology to maximize our impact and to promote health equity. Uh, let me ask you, Dr. Spluto, um, there, there seems to be some confusion out there with, uh, with, between terms like health equity uh, and diversity. Um, there, there are two, especially when it comes to diversity in radiology, and then health equity when it comes to patients. So I thought maybe it makes sense to uh, make a little bit of a distinction there before we go any further. Sure, so I can distinguish the way that I look at um, the, the two different entities. So diversity and inclusion I see as focused more on the workforce, um, in- introducing more diversity, more people from different types of backgrounds, whether it's gender or race or economic background or geographic background. Um, making the overall workforce more diverse and then inclusion is having a workforce that supports the needs of all of the different types of people who are in it. Whereas health equity, I think, focuses more on uh, the patient outcomes, achieving equitable outcomes, allowing all patients to have the opportunity to achieve their maximum health. Interesting. Well, you led the development of the Women in Radiology program at Vanderbilt, as we said right at the top of the episode. Um, One of your first steps in establishing that program, as I understand it, was to conduct a comprehensive needs assessment. 
Um, the survey that you conducted as part of that needs assessment um, found that the two most significant barriers to uh, holding women back from advancement were a lack of an understanding when it comes to promotional guidelines, as in getting a promotion in your, in your line of work, and an absence of mentorship opportunities. And I imagine these limitations must apply uh, to members of other underrepresented groups as well. Um, how did you go about shoring up this divide and what have, would you say have been the results? Well, it's hard to believe that it's actually been five years since we started our women in radiology program. Time has really flown. Um, we're actually starting to collect data right now on our five-year outcomes. So as you said, we did a baseline assessment, and then we also looked at outcomes at one year after implementing our program. And we found at one year that women were more satisfied with their rate of academic progress, with their access to mentorship opportunities, with their access to faculty development opportunities. And we've also seen a steady increase in the percentage of women in our diagnostic radiology residency program over time and a steady increase in the percentage of women faculty in our department over time. So really good progress and actually just a short period of time. It hasn't been that long. Like you said, only about five years or so or six years. Yeah, it's, um, been, it's been a really nice um, process to watch unfold and really wonderful to see the women in our department thrive. Excellent. That's so good to hear. Well, we've known for some time that the healthcare industry struggles with diversity and equity uh, a challenge in the best of times when it comes to patients. Uh, but the COVID-19 pandemic has really shined a spotlight on these issues. Uh, so with this question, I'm gonna ask you to pivot away maybe so much from the workplace internally as externally towards patients. Um, how do you think the pandemic will or should influence diversity and equity uh, when it comes to how radiologists view patients? Yeah, the pandemic has definitely brought to light several of the long-standing inequities in our country overall and in our healthcare system more specifically. I, I really hope that the spotlight that has been placed on these issues more recently will drive the systemic change that has really been necessary for a long time to address these existing inequities. I think we have an opportunity as the radiology community right now to commit to a more inclusive and equitable future. Well said. Um, what, uh, to that end, uh, what three actions do you recommend every radiologist take to increase uh, diversity and inclusion, if we bring it back to internal again? What are some good um, keystone ideas for anyone to start? I think it's important to recognize, like you're saying, that, that these aren't principles that are just held to the academic institutions. These are things that radiologists in all communities, really anyone in any community can commit to for diversity and inclusion. I think if I had to pick three things, I'd say, one, offer fair and just opportunities to everyone. Uh, two, recognize and address bias in the instant that you see it. I think that's really hard to do, but I think if you recognize it and address it right away, people are more likely to, to see what's happening. And three, accept and embrace individual differences. Um, I think moving forward, it's be, individual differences and in individuality are becoming um, more well recognized as something that can advance our field and bring new ideas to our field. So I think it's really important that all individuals learn to embrace and um, accept individual differences. On that, 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 those are three great ideas. On that, on that second point, I wonder if you could elaborate a little bit. Um, I mean, I think it's, I think everyone would agree that that's a great idea to, to catch, the, to catch the, the moment of bias as it's happening and point it out. I think um, in reality, and I'm sure you've confronted this in your own practice, uh, that might be a, a bit of a hard conversation, uh, unless you've already got a very strong uh, understanding relationship with someone. Um, you know, on average, how, how would you, you know, it's not a one size fits all, but how would you, uh, you know, advise going about that very delicate conversation with somebody? I think you're right. I think it is, it's one, hard sometimes to recognize bias, and two, it's definitely hard to call someone out on their bias. I think it's always easier to see bias retrospectively. Like if I think back to my own life and things that happened over time, like I remember in high school being told by my chemistry teacher that girls did not belong in his class. You know, I was oh, no. a freshman in high school and I was, there were- Well, you showed him junior and senior boys in there. And I, and I didn't really notice at them. I was like, well, I'm just, I'm going to take this class and move on. And, and I remember in 
medical school in my cadaver lab, which I don't think they even do cadaver lab anymore, so I might be dating myself a little bit. Uh, I remember being in a group with three of my colleagues who are wonderful people who I still keep in touch with, but one of them, after I did well on a test, looked over and he said, wow, Lucy's really smart, and then it was like the pause for a girl. The dreaded pause. <laughs> and so I think when you look back, you're like, oh my gosh, that really happened. But I think like in the moment, if he'd said, you know, Lucy, you're really smart for a girl, and I'd taken the time to say, you know, you can't really say that. And I think you can kind of jokingly point someone in the right direction. But I think it's also recognizing your own biases and whether it's through taking something like the Harvard implicit bias test. Um, so it's, it's, it's recognizing bias in yourself and in others. And maybe if you're comfortable telling them in person, if you know them well enough to do that, and if you don't, then hopefully your institution has some sort of anonymous method to report mm. methods of bias that you think might be worth reporting. Um, if you could travel back through time to your 20s, uh, what advice would you give to yourself uh, at that moment? Uh, you've already done a little bit of time travel in your last <laughs> answer, but uh, what, what, uh, what advice would you give to yourself with respect to the importance of seeking diversity in the field of radiology? So I think going back to my 20s, I wish someone had told me earlier and I'd appreciated earlier that it's okay to be different and it's okay to be yourself, that being yourself and being unique can really um, offer more strength to an organization than trying to be something you're not. And that's something I try to instill in my children, that it's okay to be different and it's okay to be yourself, that I share with my trainees when I work with them. And I think that's really important for our field to recognize, as we said, you know, recognize and embrace individuality and encourage people to be themselves. So good advice for radiology, good advice for life, good advice for parenting. That's good. You hit on a lot of cylinders right there. <laughs> um, and then um, last question is, uh, what is the, what is the, and it's kind of related, but what is the best advice uh, you've ever been given as it relates to inclusion in radiology, if, if it, in fact it's different from your last answer? So I think one of the hardest things to learn, the, for me to learn at least, was that inclusion is an active process. You can't expect it just to happen on its own. It takes an effort of the entire community to create an inclusive environment. It's really an overall cultural change. Interesting. Um, now, uh, you know, to spread your knowledge about in, in, in this subject area and your expertise, uh, you'll be co-moderating a webinar, uh, which as we record this is on uh, September 30th on health equity and radiology. Um, would you like to give viewers a, a, a some details as to what they can expect with that? Absolutely. So this is really an all-star lineup of health equity experts from across the country. So this includes Dr. Fernando de Mayo from the American Medical Association. The event is also co-sponsored by the AMA. It includes health equity experts from leading institutions, and Dr. Consuelo Wilkins from Vanderbilt, and Dr. Joseph Betancourt from Mass General. We'll have Ruth Carlos, the editor of the editor in chief of the Journal of the American College of Radiology, and Arun Krishnaraj, the chair of the ACR Patient and Family Centered Care Commission. We'll also have Andrea Barandi Kitts provide, providing the patient perspective. I think the discussion is gonna range from a historical perspective of health equity all the way to action items that individual radiologists can do to help to achieve health equity. So as you said, Dr. Efren Flores and I will be co-moderating this Don't Miss event. So please register, attend. I think it's gonna be a great event. I think you can go to acr.org slash imaging three for the registration link. Excellent. Thank you. And we will put, uh, not only can you go to acr.org slash imaging three for the registration link, but we will also put the link in the show notes for this show. And then um, for folks that uh, want to watch the video uh, after the 30th, uh, who end up seeing our conversation after that date, uh, we'll also put a link to the recorded webinar there as well. So um, with that, um, everybody go register. And uh, where can folks find you online if they want to continue this fascinating conversation, Dr. Spaluto? So I can be found on Twitter, at um, LBSRAD, or on Instagram, Rad Spaluto. OK. And we have a couple of great uh, Imaging 3.0 case studies uh, featuring Dr. Spaluto and her, and her colleagues at Vanderbilt. Uh, and again, you can find those at acr.org slash imaging3. And uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. This has been PHM in Your Practice, and we'll see you next time. And thank you, Dr. Spaluto. Thanks for having me, Chris. See you.